All right, well, good morning, afternoon, uh, Odenton Christian School for this chapel day. Pretty excited to have an opportunity to address everybody. For those of you who aren't sure who I am, I'm Pastor Lacombe. I'm the director of the school, uh, and we are excited to have you along with us this school year. As we get into the things of God, I want us to begin to focus uh, on these truths, this biblical truth. We're looking at uh, Luke chapter 8 with the idea of preparing to hear. Uh, preparing to hear. Let's go ahead and turn there in your Bibles, Luke chapter 8, Luke chapter 8, and go ahead and just, we're going to look at one verse, we'll look at several others as we get going, but we're going to start out with just verse number 18. The Bible says, take heed therefore how ye hear. There's an important aspect that we pay attention to how we hear, and he says, for whosoever hath to him shall be given, and whosoever hath not, from him shall be taken even that which he seemeth to have. Father, we come before you this uh, afternoon, and we ask, God, that you would bless your word. Help us, Father, to glorify you and to honor you. Forgive us from sin, and Lord, we just pray that you would be lifted at this time. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. <clears throat> The parable of the sower and the seed is found in three what we call synoptic gospels. That would be Matthew, uh, Mark, and Luke. And then uh, it's called the synoptic gospels just simply because the perspective is very similar to one another. And by studying this particular parable of the sower and seed in the synoptic gospels, we can find a few important aspects. First off, we see that Jesus uh, had been teaching from a boat on the shore of Galilee as he begins what's called his uh, parabolic uh, discourse. And then this is the third of five of these different types of discussions that he has with the different people that had gathered around to hear him. While both the scribes and the Pharisees heard and saw the things that Jesus taught and did, they still refused to believe it. It's kind of like this. You know how where you get four or five people in a room and something happens just out of the blue. I can remember one time we were sitting in class and all of a sudden this person comes running in the room and he says something. He turns around and he just runs right back out. And we're all kind of looking. And then the teacher said, okay, I want to know what did that person look like? And there's about 30 of us in the classroom. And so on one side, he started writing down things. And then he asked somebody else and he started writing down things. Anything that was similar, he would just check. But what was amazing is some people thought it was a guy and some people thought it was a girl. Some people perceived that what he said was one thing, and other people perceived another. Some people felt it was goofy. Other people thought it was a threat. It's just kind of interesting how so many people can view something and have different perspectives of what has actually taken place. Uh, you get a lineup of somebody who uh, had been a criminal or accused of a crime, and they get the lineup, and the person who was assaulted would go through, and a lot of times they, they'll misidentify the person who had assaulted them. It's because the perception is wrong. The perception doesn't always line up with the facts in reality. There was a situation in the Gospel of John where Jesus healed a paralytic man. He also healed a man with a withered hand. And when he healed the man with the withered hand, he did it in front of everybody, but there were varying different perspectives. Some people thought, oh, he only did it because he's got a devil. Other people say, oh, well, it's because he's the son of God. And Mark chapter 4 and verse number 20, or verse number 12, the Bible says, that seeing they may see and not perceive, and hearing that they may hear and not understand, lest at any time they should be converted and their sins should be forgiven them. The condition of your heart, and that's where we get to the uh, verse that we look at, take heed, therefore, how ye hear. One of the most important things that you can do, young person, is prepare your heart to receive the things of God. Because that's where the understanding of the things you hear take place. They take place in the area that we call the heart. Uh, but you've got to be willing and able 
to hear. In Mark chapter 3, we find uh, that account of the man with the withered hand also. Uh, it's also found in Mark chapter 3 in a synagogue where Jesus was teaching. And they got all upset because he had healed on the Sabbath day. And because he had sealed, healed on the Sabbath day, the Bible says that they were blind to the works that Jesus did. Because they, their perception was, oh, he did something wrong. Therefore, everything he does must be wrong. Their heart was hardened. And their hardened hearts did not allow for the teaching of the word of God to have any effect on their lives. And unfortunately, a lot of young people have hardened hearts to the things of God because they have things in their life they want to do, and they know that if they were to follow God, it would contradict what their own desires were. Some people like to lie, or some people like to do those things that are against their parents, and, and they like to have their way all the time. And then when they hear the word of God, their heart is hardened to the things of God because they're doing what they want to do. You see, and you don't perceive. You hear, but you don't understand. And it's because of the hardness of your heart. It brings us to a, the parable that we call the sower and the seed, or the parable of the soils. And this will be something that we look at throughout the year uh, in chapel as I get an opportunity to teach chapel, preach chapel. In Luke chapter 8, verses 9 through 15, gives us this parable. And, and, and we, we see Jesus explaining this parable to his disciples. And so very quickly this afternoon, I want to give you just several things that we can consider and we can discuss uh, and that I can share with you to help you understand how to have a good soil in your heart to hear the word of God so that way you can respond and have God's blessings upon your life. The Bible says, take heed, there in Luke chapter 8, and verse 18, how ye hear. You know, going to church is not enough for spiritual growth. Coming to a Christian school is not enough to be called a Christian. The Pharisees and the scribes both went to the synagogue and they heard the greatest preacher in the world preach the Lord Jesus Christ. And yet they got nothing out of his message. It wasn't because the message wasn't good. It was because their heart was hardened and they did not take heed how they heard. And as I was looking at this parable to bring forward to you all today, I can't help but see a lesson from those who know a thing or two about farming. In my research about farming, I found a website that had a three-point outline. And so I stole these main points. Uh, and uh, uh, to, to kind of help us to understand. And I don't know anything about farming. I'm going to say it right there. Mr. Enderly does, but I, I don't know anything about farming. But I know some things about life. And so the first thing you have to do if you're going to take heed how you hear is it starts with the soil. we got to examine the condition. And verse number 18 said, take heed Therefore, how ye hear. It wanted to make sure that the soil of your heart was good. And there are really four different kinds of soil. The first is what we would call packed by tracks. And that's hard and uninterested. And in the parable of the sower, that would be in verse number five when it says, A sower went out to sow his seed. And, he, and as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and it was trodden down, and the fowls of the air devoured it up. That's that packed area that won't let anything in. I'm not interested. I don't want to hear it. Get it out of my face. The second kind of ground that you could have is called stony and sparse. And that's found in verse number 6. And some fell upon, upon a rock. And as soon as it was sprung up, it withered away because it lacked moisture. It's only open to those things of interest, but closed to the full counsel of God. I've only got a little bit of interest, and, and maybe something can start to grow, but I'm, gonna, I'm gonna just going to go ahead and, and, and let it wither away because 
my heart is really hardened to those things of God. The other kind of ground that your heart could be is called cumbered and cluttered. In verse number 7 it says, And some fell among the thorns, and the thorns sprang up with it and choked it. See, a lot of us have so many cares and so many other things in our lives, in our hearts, so many plans and and so many uh, false areas of, of interest that we let the things of God just get choked away because we've got too much going on in our hearts already. We don't have time for God. We might be one of those people that would say, maybe one day I'll be interested in the things of God, only to have someday never come. And then we have what's called the good ground, and that's found in verse number 8. And other fell on good ground and sprang up and bare fruit a hundredfold. And when he had said these things, he cried, He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. You see, that good ground is prepared for production. Now, what kind of heart do you have? What kind of heart do you have? If you were to look at those things and be honest... Most of you probably have the first three. Either I'm not interested in the things of God, I'll suffer through it. Okay, I'll I'll sit here and I'll glaze over as the Bible starts being taught. Some of you might right now might be sitting in your seats and and as soon as chapel happened, your eyes rolled and you said, all right, I'm just going to close out for a little bit. You're already hardened to the things of God. You don't have ears to hear. Some of you might be that stony and sparse. You say, well, I'm only going to be interested in the things that I want to allow into my life. I, anything else about not doing sin, and I, I, I don't want any of that. I just want the love of Jesus. I'll take the love of Jesus and, and nothing else. Well, that means you have a stony and sparse heart, and God can't produce fruit in that ground. Cumbered and cluttered. Pastor, I just got too much going on in my life right now. I got too many plans. I'm looking, I, I want to you know, go to this college or that college. I want to do this and I want to do that. I don't have time for God. I don't have time for God's word. Maybe one day, but not today. That's where most of you probably are right now today. Most of you are, are sitting here and you're thinking, I'm, not, I'm just not interested. Well, that's because your heart is hardened. And God can't minister to you and help you the way he wants to because you've hardened your heart to the things of God. And so we've got to take heed to how we hear. We've got to look at the soil, examine the soil, be honest with God about the heart soil. And the second thing is you need to prepare your Soil for planting. You need to have, prepare your heart. We're looking at farming. We'd say prepare for cultivation. He says in verse 8 again, and, and he that hath ears to hear, let him hear. You got to have ears to hear. The Bible says in Isaiah 55, 6, Seek the Lord while he may be found and call upon him while he is near. You understand that there's going to come a point in time where you are not able to call on God. It's going to be too late. There are many people who had every intention, when I grow up, when I become an adult, I will seek after God. I heard a missionary uh, recently give a testimony. Uh, He was preaching at a church camp, and there was a young man who came and on the first night, he was preaching on biblical salvation, and he was preaching the truth. And this young man was sitting uh, just about a, a third of the way back on the right-hand side, he said. And he goes, that young man, when I gave the altar call, the invitation to respond to the word of God, I said, if you don't know you're on your way to heaven, if you don't know that you're saved, I want you to raise your hand right now. And that young man raised his hand. And he said, I want you to make eye contact with me. And that young man made eye, co- eye contact with him. And he said, I want you to come on down and, and get me, and I'll pray with you. And the young man stayed right where he was. Well, after the service, that preacher went up, and he said, hey, well, why don't you come forward? He says, you know what? I'm going to wait till Thursday night. I'm going to wait till Thursday night, and, 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 and I'll respond then. He says, yeah, but you know now. He said, well, yeah, 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 I, I know I need to be saved. He said, but I, I, I'm going to wait till Thursday night. 
And he says, oh, I want to encourage you. You never know what's going to happen. He's like, I'm at church camp. What can happen? Well, Tuesday night comes, and the preacher preaches the word of God, and he, and he declares the truth, and the young man raises his hand again at the end of the invitation, and he invites him to come forward, and he doesn't come forward. And he goes, he says, why didn't you come forward? You know you need salvation. He says, yeah, I know I do. He says, do you believe? He says, you know, I, I, I'm just not sure yet. And he says, well, let me talk with you. He says, no, 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 I don't want to talk right now. I'll wait till Thursday. Well, Wednesday, they went out swimming as a group. And as they were out, the young man was past where the buoys were, ended up getting a cramp, and they didn't get to him in time, and he drowned. Seek the Lord while he may be found. We're not guaranteed a tomorrow or next week. You're not guaranteed till you're 30 years old, you're 20 years old. You're not guaranteed until you have a family. Well, I'll seek the Lord then. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. And God desires right now for you to respond. When you're preparing that soil for planting, you need to have ears to hear, but you also need to remove everything and anything that doesn't belong in your heart. Philippians 3.8 says, Yea, doubtless I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung that I may win Christ. He says, listen, everything in this world is waste. It's garbage. You know, there are a lot of people who put a whole lot of emphasis on money, on, on their uh, desire career, on making sure that they have this car or that car. And Paul says, listen, I used to be in that position where I thought, if only I could attain the position of Pharisee, if only I could be in the Sanhedrin, then I'll be happy. He wasn't. Well, then I'll be zealous and try to kill the Christians. And he wasn't. And then he met the Lord, and all of a sudden he found true peace in his life. And he says, listen, everything else, my education, all those things, you know what, that's, that's nothing. But my relationship with Christ is everything. And those things need to be removed. And we need to till the ground of our heart. It's all hard and packed. There's nothing going to get in there. But the Word of God, the Spirit of God, will till up your heart and allow good seed to be planted in good ground. We need to be in the Word and ready for the sowing. Isaiah 28, verses 9 through 10 says, Whom shall he teach knowledge? Who was God going to teach knowledge to? He says, And whom shall make, he make to understand doctrine? And then he says this, them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breasts. For precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little, there a little. God is going to teach according to his word. He's going to allow the word of God to go into your life, break up the soil, give you ears to understand, so that way you can have the relationship with Christ and the growth God desires for you to have. you got to prepare your heart. What does your heart look like? What does it look like today? If you were honest with yourselves, we'd go back and we'd see it's one of those first three. Packed by tracks, stony and sparse, cumbered and cluttered. But that's not where God desires for you to be. And God can't do a whole lot with that. But good ground brings forth fruit a hundredfold. And the last thing that we have here is you need to install fencing to keep the undesirable out. Keep those out that will destroy. We call this setting biblical boundaries. Uh, my, wife went out, we, my wife and I went out and we, we bought a whole bunch of plants and things for our front of our house to try to make it look nice. But we have these things called rodents that run around our front. You say, what are they? Bunny rabbits. They're everywhere. 
I cannot stand these things. And so when my wife had <clears throat> these uh, uh, sunflower seeds she had planted, and, and she, we watered them, watered them, took care of them, fed them with the, with the uh, expensive miracle grow stuff, and these things started to grow, and they're getting big, and, and I put them down a step for them to get a little bit more water, and then I got distracted. I didn't put them up, and they were out all night. When we came out in the morning, those pesky bunnies had chewed every single one of them down and just destroyed it. Didn't eat them, just chewed the stalks, and they all fell over and were dead. The way to keep them away is for me to put fences around it. And unfortunately, we allow things into our heart and into our lives that keep us from being established in God's word. And as God begins to move, those things come in and they start packing the dirt down again, making the soil hard. Psalm 119 verse 105 says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. What that means is God desires to be your boundary. But for you to get there, you have to have a relationship with God. So we have to understand who he is. And the Bible tells us that we are all sinners. Every single one of you that are in the school listening to this chapel message, you understand that you're a sinner. And in our sin, we are separated from God. But the Lord Jesus Christ came to this earth to allow us to enjoy the benefits of of a relationship with God through what we call grace. Jesus came and he died on the cross. And the Bible says, I am crucified with Christ. When he died on the cross, he went there for you and I to be our substitutionary sacrifice. But it doesn't mean that it's given to you without your response. You've got to have those ears to hear and respond. Maybe you're here today and you know you don't have that relationship with God. You know that you're not born again. You know you've never trusted in Christ to be your Savior, to redeem you from sin. Well, today can be that day. The Bible tells us over in Romans chapter 10, in verse number 9, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. This is God's promise to you. It isn't based on going to church. Going to church won't make your heart right. It isn't based on just reading your Bible. It isn't based on, on being religious or doing some religious thing. It isn't based on, oh, well, God just loves everybody. God expects you to respond, and he's going to hold you accountable to respond to his word. Because Jesus went and died for the sins of all mankind. He died for each of you, for you to have the escape. And if you deny that truth and reject him, well, he's going to reject you in front of the Father. Doesn't have to be that way. God commendeth his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And right now, today, you can enter into a relationship with him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. What is stopping you from entering into that relationship with God? Don't let the thorns and thistles start choking this truth. Don't sit there and roll your eyes and say, oh man, I've heard this before, not interested. That's a hardened heart. God can't do anything with it. Don't say, well, yeah, you know what? You know, God loves everybody. God does extend his love to all men. But the holy God will still condemn people to a lake of fire. For the wages of sin is death. It's God's promise. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Let's have every head bowed, every eye closed, nobody looking around. Who would just say this? Pastor, I'm going to be honest, I don't know I'm saved. Would you pray for me? If that's you, with your heads bowed, everyone in the, 
in the classroom, your head's bowed and your eyes closed. Pastor, I don't know that I'm saved. I don't know that I'm going to heaven. Will you pray for me? You put your hand up. Don't be afraid. Put your hand up. And teachers, look to see who's got their hand raised. Okay, you can put your hands down. Who would say this? Pastor, I know I'm saved. But to be honest, my heart is pretty hard to the things of God. And I pray that God's word would till up the hardness of my heart so that I could be used of God and be spiritually minded. Pastor, will you pray for me with your heads bowed and eyes closed? Pastor, pray for me that I'd have a sensitive heart to the things of God. Please pray for me. If that's you, you put your hand up. Again, don't be afraid of what other people in the room might think. Put your hand up so we could pray for you. And teachers, look around and see whose hand is up. Father, I come before you and I thank you for each of these boys and girls who raised their hand. And Lord, I pray that you would put your hand upon them, that you would encourage them, strengthen them, and build them up. Thank you for your love for us. And thank you for all that you do for them. I pray that they would come to the knowledge of who you are if they're not saved. And if they are saved, Father, I pray that they would allow your word to be a light and a lamp that would guide them. We thank you, Father, again in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you all for your attentiveness today. And if you have doubts about that salvation, talk to your teacher today. If you need a teacher to pray for you, to help you get through that hardened heart aspect, have a teacher pray with you. Your, my office is always open. And if I'm here, I'd be more than happy to talk with each of you. All right. God bless. And thank you again for being with us on this chapel day.